Hello friends, James Stevenson here, trying out some new OBS software uh, to record this video that a few people recommended to me, so uh, thank you to those of you who thought that would be a good idea. I think it's a good idea if I can figure out how to get my audio levels right. Let me know if the volume is uh, working out for you okay using this software. Uh, Loki is sleeping in his bed at the other end of my table, but I am here to walk you through James's Gems of the Week for the prior week. Uh, so in this series, I scroll through my Twitter likes over the last week. You might see a couple of replies from Elon Musk that I got in this week's video. And uh, I, I will provide color commentary that only I, James Stevenson, can provide on why I liked those tweets. So without further ado, I'm going to try an OBS transition and see if I can share my desktop that way. And hey, look at that, it worked. So uh, here's my desktop here, and then here's the window that I have pre-made very large, so you can see what's going on there. And check me out, look at the size of this box in here. So this is way bigger than it used to be when I was using Zoom uh, to record calls. So, uh, Hopefully this recording is working pretty well right now. I'm gonna see if I can record James's Gems of the Week. Uh, so, uh, here's one from Kathy, Kathy Kitchler. Just when the notion crosses my mind that I might still be up to performing at I cannot underscore enough levels of analysis, he casually mentions not updating spreadsheets until the 10Q drops. Respect. So yeah, I do read the 10Q before I update my forecast to make sure that I'm not missing any important information that was in the 10Q that wasn't in the investor letter. So uh, that's a practice that I try to stay in. Here's a tweet from Elon Musk replying to me and Holmar's blog, LMAOOO, absolutely, with two laughing crying emojis on it. So I'll click on this. And I will scroll on up so we can see what we're talking about here. And if you have little ears in your uh, personal audience, you may want to skip ahead a minute or two because this is news about uh, Elon Musk, who w was reported to have had an affair with Sergey Brin's wife, but uh, that is not true. As Elon replied, this is total BS. Sergey and I are friends, and we were at a party together last night. Uh, so, Holmar's catalog, uh, at Holmar's blog on Twitter, was happy to hear that and shared some other advice. And Elon shared a very candid and uh, honest uh, reply, to which I replied, Tesla Q tries to convince people this man is dishonest. Like, how, how many people do you know who will, will tweet that honestly, very few people. This is, you know, the, the core foundation of the Tesla Q argument is that uh, this man can't be trusted because he's just not honest enough. Then from the archive, I put a tweet from 2020 when a different rumor was going around. I cannot underscore enough the integrity necessary to deny having a threesome with Amber Heard and Cara Delevingne. So that's where the absolutely reply came from. All right, the next tweet that I liked came from James Cat at Tesla Fan MTL. If you still don't understand why Tesla wouldn't show up on an EU sales report in the first month of a quarter, please stop following Tesla and get off Twitter. This is embarrassing. So he's replying to Cy Dude and Taylor Rogan, both of whom have been following Tesla long enough to know better uh, citing a quarter-to-date sales report and asking, wait, where is Tesla exactly? Where is Tesla? Well, if you had pulled a quarter-to-date report for any previous quarter when Tesla was the number one seller of uh, electric vehicles in Europe, you would also have seen that they were nowhere to be found during the first month of the quarter because Tesla produces the vehicles early in the quarter that have the farthest to go to reach their buyers and they produce the cars that are going to buyers closest to that factory as late in the quarter as they can so as to maximize the number of vehicles produced in any given quarter that get delivered to their owners before the end of the quarter. That keeps the, the ending inventory levels down. This is smart 
uh, operational and logistical management of a business, and they know it. They just uh, pretend not to on Twitter. A few tweets here from Gary Black in a good thread that included information about Bitcoin and the uh, severance charge and whether or not Tesla had a gain on their sale of Bitcoin. They did, we found out in the 10Q. So uh, there was a lot of confusion around that after the investor letter came out. Um, Real Meat Kevin was very confused about this and got it wrong. I had to correct him in a couple of videos that I uh, uh, uploaded to YouTube last week that got seen by more people than my average video, but a lot less people than see his average video. So he was very concerned that Tesla was going to have to go raise money, and uh, there is no need to be concerned about that. So uh, Gary had a few good tweets about that. I'm not going to read through all of these, but that was good information, so I liked those. Next, a tweet from uh, Bradford Ferguson, at Brad S. Ferguson on Twitter. James, you made some really good points in the part two video. I might have to watch it a second time. So he was talking about that. A uh, couple of videos I made in response to Real Meat Kevin being very concerned about Tesla's financials when there's just no need for him to be. Next is a tweet from Elon Musk. The media is a click-seeking machine dressed up as a truth-seeking machine. In response to a tweet from Jim Hall at J. Hall, the U.S. press, like the U.S. government, is a corrupt and troubled institution. Corrupt not so much in the sense that it accepts bribes, but in a systemic sense. It fails to do what it claims to do, what it should do, and what society expects it to do. So those were good tweets. Uh, Elon tweeted, the amount of attention on me has gone supernova, which super sucks. Unfortunately, even trivial articles about me generate a lot of clicks. We'll try my best to be heads down focused on doing useful things for civilization. How do you not like that tweet? It's a great tweet. Um, Mac at Mac, K-E-N-I-Z-M on Twitter tweeted, glad you chose to not be the adult, James, in response to making that uh, second rebuttal video. But I really appreciate how you consistently leave out the subjectivity and sensationalisms in these rebuttals. You always base your views on detailed, logical facts and constantly adjust your view based on new data. So I like that tweet. Tesla Boomer Mama, uh, Alexandra, replied to me, I watched it already twice, still did not understand everything, and still pride myself to be good with financial analysis. You were just worlds ahead, James. So grateful to have you in our Tesla family. So uh, that was very uh, thoughtful. So I like that tweet. It's a nice thing to say. A couple of tweets here from uh, Matt Smith. Uh, so this one says, this is one of those situations where our normal heuristics for evaluating a situation are completely inadequate. Taking a deep dive and understand the company, industry, and shift towards electrification is much smarter than relying on a comps analysis. Uh, still today, I hear people arguing that Tesla's market cap being bigger than all other o auto OEMs combined is crazy, so it must be overvalued. Uh, but if they're five times more profitable per car sold, which Tesla is compared to Ford and GM, uh, and are growing at 50% per year, um, that's a different story. Okay, here's a, just a visualization here, an excellent chart as at Hudster2 tweeted about how profitable is Tesla really? So what we see on the left of the screen here is the revenue. Revenue is the top line sales that Tesla makes. And that's broken down by division. So you see auto sales, regulatory credits, auto leasing, energy generation and storage, and then services and other is the everything else bucket. So automotive sales of new vehicles to cash buyers is by far Tesla's largest source of revenue, making almost 14 billion of the 17 billion-ish of total Tesla revenue. So what you see at the bottom of the screen here is the cost of revenue. These are the costs that are directly related to giving the people the stuff they bought in the revenue section. 
So uh, the primary cost here is automotive sales. That figures, that's where most of the revenue is coming from. Then there's auto leasing, energy generation and storage and services. So these are the, the costs of running a factory and all the stuff the factory has to buy and all the people who work at the factory, etc. Which leaves you with gross profit. Revenue minus cost of revenues equals gross profit. So here's the breakdown of that by category. It's the same 0.3 billion of regulatory credits gross margin as it is regulatory credits revenue here because there is no cost of regulatory credits, or rather, the cost is so immaterial, you wouldn't even be able to see the bar. Uh, there are some costs, but they're small. So what comes out of gross profit? Uh, well, you can get operating profit or operating expenses out of gross profit. So these are research and development, selling general administrative expense. Uh, so these are like headquarters type expenses. Then up here you have operating profit or earnings before tax. And you've got tax expense here, which leaves you with net income. So that was a good chart. Next, a tweet from Morehouse at W underscore Morehouse on Twitter. Windows, win plus shift plus S, you're welcome. What was Morehouse talking about here? Um, Somebody asked, do I prefer the iPad Twitter experience? And I said, yeah, it's easier for doing screenshots from websites and such without needing to crop. So you just hit the two buttons on your iPad and it screenshots. And you can crop it immediately and save it and you'll have it forever. What Morehouse uh, provided here was the keyboard shortcut for Windows. And what happens is it grays your whole screen out and then you can drag a box around only the portion of the screen that you want a screenshot of and it'll copy that to your clipboard. That's a very handy keyboard shortcut. So I like that. Good learning. Next a tweet from Joel Karenin at Joel underscore Karenin on Twitter. Mitigating headwinds. So what was this a reply to? Uh, it was me tweeting out GM earnings. So here's how their profit fared versus prior year, same quarter. And my source for this graphic is GM. This was in General Motors investor letter. So the fictionalized conversation here between General Motors investor relations and the CEO of the company, Mary Barra. How do we put a positive spin on these profit declines? What's MBA speak for? It's not my fault. We mitigated industry-wide headwinds. <laughs> yeah, that, that's literally what they put at the bottom of their chart. So uh, translating, uh, well, they're not the worst earnings you'll see. <laughs> we, we're, we weren't the worst. We, we, we did better than some people did. So yeah, the gray bars are the prior year, the blue bars are the current year, and all the profit numbers for GM were down. Uh, so that was that tweet that I liked. And there's one here from Forward Cap, also on the topic of GM earnings that were released earlier this week. Mary Barra last week had said that GM would catch Tesla by 2025, but today, uh, July 26th, GM hopes to do 90 billion in EV revenue by 2030. <laughs> well, those are different things because uh, for context, Tesla will do 85 billion of revenue this year and 130 billion in 2023. So if GM is only doing uh, 90 billion of EV revenue in 2030, they are not catching Tesla uh, anytime soon. So that was that tweet. Next tweet from a much better face on Twitter. Electric vehicles will get dramatically cleaner than gas cars and trucks as more renewable energy generation comes online. By 2034, EV cars will be 15 times more efficient than gas sedans and over 25 times more efficient than gas trucks. So the grid gets cleaner and EVs, mile per gallon equivalent, gets cleaner as that happens, right? And this whole tweet uh, thread is pretty great if you scroll through and go to the top. A few uh, nice visualizations from a study released by the UCSUSA organization uh, just showing that electric cars are, yes, as you would figure, cleaner than gas cars are. Um, much, much cleaner. And the break-even point 
is short. Uh, less than two years of average driving makes your EV cleaner, even after factoring in the uh, environmental costs of creating batteries in the first place, which can be recycled, by the way. Good luck trying to recycle gasoline emissions. That isn't going to work for you. Okay, so those are the next few tweets that I liked that we just saw in that thread. Next, a tweet from Ashley Vance that I liked. Elon is a very complex, nuanced, and interesting person. I tend to find the blind, pro and con, borderline religious camps very simplistic. Like all of us, he has a lot going on, but obviously in much more dramatic fashion. So Ashley was uh, replying to a request from me to hear his take. So I was happy to get that. On a thread that began with Gergavin uh, on Twitter, tweeting, serious question, why do people hate Elon Musk for no reason? And Bill Lee retweeted that, saying, fair question, only a handful of people truly know him, but so, so, so many haters. And Holmar's blog replied, and the people who actually know him usually like him. And I replied, yes, it's obvious that the people who inarguably know Elon the best from spending lots of time with him love him a lot. You can tell uh, when you see them talk about him in interviews. Here's a list of examples. So that's where that like came from for Ashley Vance. Next, a tweet from Eva Fox, or two tweets from Eva Fox, who went on a long trip of thousands of miles. And the only thing that uh, she clearly understood is that she needs Tesla Autopilot, a lifesaver for people who drive long distances. Uh, so many sucky drivers on the road who constantly create emergencies. Trucks driving in the oncoming lane uh, nearly crashed into her. So a couple of good tweets there from Eva. Next, uh, a tweet from Jan of the EV Universe, maybe John of the EV Universe. I'll make this big so you can see it. It's the Toyota Executive Boardroom meeting. How do we keep our hybrids alive? And the suggestions around the uh, mahogany table. Let's lobby against BEVs. Let's make our first BEV suck. How about we go full EV? And out the window goes that suggestion with the person who dared to suggest it. Yeah, uh, Toyota does everything they can to avoid going full EV, and they have been doing that for at least a decade. Next to a tweet I liked from Renata Conkley. Great meme at I cannot underscore enough. So what was this? Oh, so uh, Elon said Business Insider Trading is not a real publication. Uh, replying to Pranay Pathole, uh, who tweeted, this is so true at Elon Musk, and uh, tweeted a meme that I created. Uh, how can you tell I created it? It has my watermark down here at the bottom. I cannot underscore enough, right here on the doormat. Of Elon saying, uh, Elon just doing what he does, minding his own business, being Elon Musk, trying to make the world a better place. And uh, the Wall Street Journal, the LA Times, and Business Insider are lying in wait with knives out, uh, just out of view. So that was a good uh, meme, I thought, and Renata did as well. So did I reply here? Yes. Uh, I said, there's no such thing as Brad Dress, so long as they spell your name right. Uh, ha having been given the opportunity to make that pun by Brad Dress, who wrote this uh, bad press article uh, with uh, Elon Musk's name spelled correctly, but everything else in the article being untrue. All right, so one more back button, I think, is good to get me back to my likes. Next, a tweet from Daniel Rucci. I'm going to have to quote this. Uh, next time things go south, I have demonstrated the ability to mitigate housewide toddler malfeasance. <laughs> yeah, mitigate. Mitigate those headwinds. That's, you, you don't have to succeed. All you have to do is mitigate the headwinds a little, and that's good enough. Uh, Tesla Doc at TrotMD, wow, your punning skills are well honed, sir, in response to the Brad Dress pun. Uh, next, a couple of tweets from Matt Smith and uh, Farzad Mizbahi. James, would you be down to come on the channel and have a grand old time? And I replied in the affirmative. So we have a, 
a date scheduled for the Saturday morning following the investor, uh, the annual investor meeting. So that'll be something to mark your calendars for and look forward to. Matt Smith suggested that uh, Farzad should ask tons of boring accounting questions on his behalf. Um, Oh, and on a roll, Matt Smith also replied to Elon Musk, saying probably some anonymous source knows better than you, Sergey, and uh, the other person in the article. Whew. That's how the press thinks. They don't want primary sources. Uh, so Alan Dale sent a tweet, at Alan Dale on Twitter, $150 as a price target for Tesla. You think 18-ish is the right P.E. ratio for a company growing like this? And he uh, tweeted out a chart that I made a quarter ago of Tesla deliveries going up, up, and more up. Kind of an unbelievable chart. And next, a couple of tweets from Gary Black about Tesla Q, um, how they veer from one narrative to another to explain why Tesla is about to crack uh, this week, the flavor of the week is Tesla EV prices. Last week it was payables. A week before that, it was the second quarter results. And if they spent more time analyzing the numbers and forecasting UPS for the next five years, they would realize how crazy it is to be short Tesla. Uh, the biggest mistake they make is just assuming competitors can launch and scale up new, good EVs that consumers will buy. Um, as Volkswagen has learned, there's huge brand taint with existing ICE brands, and new brands don't just magically take off. Uh, for example, the ID4. Every EV uh, consumer wants a Tesla. So uh, here's a response to the Tesla valuation being insane. How is it insane? At a 61x uh, to 2023 earnings, uh, with growth of 45% and a peg at 1.36. There is nothing as cheap as Tesla in the auto sector with huge 2023 year-to-date revisions up 46%. Uh, the analysts have raised their earnings expectations by and Tesla will literally outrun its multiple uh, 13x 2023 price to earn, uh, 2026 price to earnings. Okay, next tweet from Rob Maurer who tweeted 75 basis point increase it is, which met the expectation, as you can tell by looking at the Wall Street reaction to this news breaking, highly anticipated to be 75 basis points, and that's what the market got. So with risk off, uh, the stocks took off. Next is Soylent Brown, at Brown Soylent on Twitter, with something nice to say about GM's Altium battery platform, uh, not too bad. And Mary Barra is who he was retweeting here, saying that GM has secured a scalable and sustainable supply chain to make EVs. So let's hope that is true, and they're not going to have problems uh, finding the materials they need to make enough electric vehicles to survive. Next, a tweet from Lone Star Musk, at Lone Star with two R's, Musk, on Twitter. Triple Gordon, what do we have here? We've got uh, Gordon Johnson driving a Chevy Bolt with a front license tag Detroit on it. A 90% off uh, sticker price on here. Uh, Gordon thinks that uh, Tesla, will, Tesla stock will be available for at least 90% off the current prices if you just wait long enough and uh, topped off by antler horns uh, because Gordon uses antlers in all of his decorating, much like Gaston from Beauty and the Beast. Oh, so what was he replying to here? Why did I like this? Uh, this was in response to a few tweets that I sent out. I'm gonna make you dizzy with this uh, if I scroll too fast, but uh, yeah, Tesla did close above 809 gaining more than 420 per trading day since this year's low price of 628 on May 24th. Um, more than a 4.2069% increase, a very important uh, psychological uh, percentage increase level. And uh, for those asking what price Tesla stock would need to finish at to close up 6.9420% for the day, uh, it would be 8.30, and Tesla almost made that. 
So I, I tweeted, I love a good three buck day, not meaning three bucks as in three dollars. Uh, but uh, my sarcasm emoji here uh, was picked up on by Lone Star Musk, who knew that I was talking about the Gordon, which is the seventeen dollar uh, price target Gordon Johnson famously had for Tesla. So if you're up three times that or fifty one dollars in a day, that's a three Gordon day. All right. Uh, here's a nice tweet from Patrick O'Connell at Tesla underscore Indiana. Look who took delivery today. So here's a uh, future Tesla owner, a current Tesla owner. He's got this Tesla now. So I thought that was a good tweet. Next uh, tweet from Elon Musk. Uh, two tweets, in fact. Inflation might be trending down and more Tesla commodity prices are trending down than up for what it's worth. This is bullish if you are a Tesla investor. You should want to hear that Tesla's commodity prices, which are the least controllable cost input into Tesla's P&L, uh, are trending down rather than up. That's good. John Acryder tweeted, from one of my friends who hated Elon Musk, I used to hate Elon Musk until I listened to your interview with him. You've shown another side of him that many don't see. The more you get to know Elon Musk, the more you like him unless you're a member of Tesla Q and you develop conspiracy theories about how he's lying to you or something. Next is a tweet from Sawyer Merritt. I highly recommend watching this clip from Autoline. It was a good video where Tim Libby from S&P Global Mobility talked about how Tesla is killing the competition in terms of brand loyalty. And I myself sent out this tweet uh, that Tesla buyer loyalty is unprecedented with a much shorter clip of um, Tom Libby uh, sharing that when Tesla buyers buy another EV, 95% of the time they buy a Tesla, uh, which he said was a mind-blowing stat and got agreement immediately from the rest of this panel of experts. Uh, Tesla boomer mama Alexandra retweeted that at, and tagged SP Global Ratings tweeting, how about you listen to your own analyst and upgrade Tesla to investment grade? It's about time. Or you want to lose the last bit of relevance you still have? Ooh, that's a good tweet. Next a tweet from Elon Musk here. 10.13 is probably a week or so away, but yes, people outside of California will notice improvements the most. Who was he replying to here? Oh, he was replying to me. <laughs> All right, so uh, up to the top of this thread. Elon said, I can't say for sure Starship will reach escape velocity, but my hubris certainly has. Uh, Dirty Tesla asked, will Beta 10.13 reach escape velocity this weekend? And rather than answering two weeks, Elon Musk replied, we're working super hard on 10.13, but it isn't ready yet. So I replied, but when it finally drops, it'll blow our minds. With a link to a video, um, uh, dramatizing exactly such a scenario to occur. Uh, so up we go to the next tweet. This is from Rob Maurer. In response to the bill currently under consideration, uh, the Inflation Reduction Act of 2022, humorously named by Congress, uh, which includes EV tax credits. Uh, so Tesla would get their EV tax credit back, but uh, if you read the details, the specifications of this bill, the same $7,500 tax credit would also be available to any internal combustion engine vehicle so long as they put 7 kilowatt hours of batteries at least on board, which would only cost them like $1,000. So that would be a perverse incentive for manufacturers of any gasoline vehicle to do exactly that. Uh, you know, duct tape on seven kilowatt hours worth of batteries and call it a hybrid and make the vehicle $7,500 cheaper to the end consumer. Uh, that is a flagrant waste of resources and ensures we will fall behind in clean vehicles. So Elon replied to Rob saying, good point. Time to move on from hybrid cars. That was a phase. And Rob chased that uh, by saying, unnecessary crutch at this point. Those interested can use this letter as a template to inform their senator. And there's a petition to raise awareness as well. So sign Rob's petition. Encourage your congressperson 
to uh, get those amendments made so that uh, mild hybrids that mostly pollute don't get the same incentive that fully electric vehicles would qualify for. Alex at Alex underscore a Voight on Twitter tweeted, would you prefer to be in a car that represents the blue or the red bar? Now, this is not my favorite way of visualizing safety in terms of millions of miles traveled per one fire registered. That seems like an upside down way of thinking about safety to me. Maybe I'm the only one. Uh, but you can travel a lot farther in a Tesla on average before it will catch fire than you can in the average US vehicle according to the National Fire Prevention uh, Agency or Association, whatever the A stands for. So uh, yeah, don't fall for the people who tell you Teslas are at heightened risk of fire. Uh, if your primary concern is that you don't want your car to catch fire, the vehicle you should buy is a Tesla. Teslas are the least likely vehicles to catch fire. There's just more news about it when a Tesla does catch fire. Next a tweet from Yashu Sharma retweeting Farzad Mizbahi to mark your calendar for their video. So I like that video. I, I did a video with Yashu last week and I'll do one with Farzad next week. So I like that. Next uh, tweet from Tommy Tesla PR at Tesla at Tesla wins two on Twitter. Imagine posting a photo and being too scared to actually retweet or tag him at I cannot underscore enough. So I'll let you read this from Gustavo Latovsky. as I take a sip of my coffee. So uh, Gustavo, longtime Tesla Q Generalissimo, uh, Tesla hater and short seller. Imagine thinking you have actually invented some indicator with a screenshot of my tweet from yesterday. People just wanted to know because the Tesla stock price was up a lot. You can see that here. It rose a lot in, in a short period of time. So people just wanted to know, hey, are we back to Stevenson indicator yet or not? This is a joke. This is joke technical analysis. This is parody of people who take technical analysis seriously, which I say, I don't know, every single time I tweet about this and also in the YouTube videos that I uh, made to explain Stevenson Indicator, it's a joke. The, the TM at the end is to hammer home and emphasize that I'm joking. Um, so a lot of people responded to Gustavo telling him so. Uh, I found out about it because it took that tweet to notify me that this had happened. I wasn't tagged until then. So uh, I replied, apologies if my parody Tesla technical analysis doesn't rise to the level of Tesla Q discourse to which you are accustomed, with a few exhibits here that uh, I will let you read if you want to pause the video now and read these. This one in particular, which shows what I was tweeting versus what Gustavo was tweeting in 2019 and 2020. Um, the next one is more recent uh, from a few, well, from the, the account at the top there. A couple of tweets from him. This one uh, from 2016, he thought GM could kill Tesla in one swoop uh, if they would reduce the price of the Bolt by $3,000. So this is the this is the level of discourse uh, for which Tesla Q is comfortable, but uh, yeah, not a fan of my Stevenson indicator parody chart. And the last like of the week comes from the short shorts historian at Tesla historian who I can never leave out of one of these for a week. This day in Tesla Q history, definitely no upside clown emoji. For DIP Harambe at Boy2000Fan on Twitter from three years ago, who tweeted, I see two scenarios with Tesla stock. It either goes sideways for 40 years as it grows into its overvalued car company valuation, or it goes to zero. Hope I don't have to stay short for 40 years, but there is definitely no upside. Well, I don't think you stayed short for 40 years because you must have been stopped out of your short position or else you're, you know, you've lost 20 times your money at this point from, from those levels. Ouch. All right. So what I will do next is click on the outro button of OBS Studio, almost like I'm a pro at this. 
and say if you've enjoyed this week's video, click the like button or not. It's your life. Do what you want to do. But it helps my channel if you click the like button. And if you're not subscribed to my channel, you could subscribe to my channel. And I will see you in the next edition of James's Gems of the Week.